Welcome back to Fantasy Football Today, presented by BetMGM. It's time now for our running back roundtable. We'll talk about some situations going on in certain backfields, and can they be solved for fantasy managers? Do we have a problem for certain situations, or are we in a good spot with some of these backfields? And the first one we're going to start with is not a very good one. We thought it would be, but it's Christian McCaffrey. So he's returned now for three games, has not scored a touchdown in three games, first time that's happened for him since joining the 49ers. And his last three games, he's trending in the wrong direction. 16.7 PPR points his first game back in Week 10, 14.6 in Week 11 and 7.8 in week 12 against the Green Bay Packers. We know there's a lot of injuries right now, Robert, with Brock Purdy. We don't know if he's going to return in week 13 against Buffalo. You got Trent Williams, who's obviously a big part of the run game, not playing last week against the Packers, their star left tackle. How do we view Christian McCaffrey moving forward? We had this discussion last week on who's the best running back rest of season. I took McCaffrey. I don't feel very comfortable about that right now. So where do we feel about McCaffrey rest of the way? I still think he's an RB1, RB2 type running back. I think he's still a must-start player for fantasy managers moving forward. Yes, the 49ers are dealing with a lot of injuries, and, and that's part of why Christian McCaffrey, is his numbers are, are you know going in the wrong direction the last few weeks. But he's a guy that can have a big game you know, at any point this season. And, and, and 49ers, once they get more healthy, you'll get more production from Christian McCaffrey. So I still think he's an RB1, RB2. Listen, this has been the year of the old running back. James Conner has been better than we expected. Derrick Henry's obviously had a resurgent. Aaron Jones is still good. Saquon Barkley's still good. Like, so I don't want to write Christian McCaffrey off, but I just don't think that he's quite Christian McCaffrey right now. When you watch him run, he doesn't look quite like Christian McCaffrey. I'm ranking him as an RB2, not an RB1 until he proves otherwise. And I'll go back to something you said last year, Robert, when we had you on one of our shows. With Josh Jacobs with the holdout, it took him a few weeks to get going because he missed preseason, didn't have his legs underneath him. And maybe that's what McCaffrey's dealing with right now is that he's getting his legs back after not playing for the first nine weeks of the season with the Achilles injury. So hopefully the best of McCaffrey is yet to come. We did see Jacobs obviously pick up his production after a slow start last year. It takes a little bit of time for these guys, as we know, to get in NFL shape as opposed to just being in shape. Next one, Robert, here. Do we have a Jonathan Taylor problem? Because he has not scored a touchdown since week eight. His last two weeks, he's combined for 10.5 PPR points. And that's despite getting 24 carries against the Jets in week 11. So Richardson's been up and down the last couple of weeks at the quarterback spot. Is Taylor safe as a number one, even number two running back? Because he's not been involved in the passing game, taking on the Patriots in week 13. I think he's still an RB2. The problem with the Colts offense right now is that they're putting all of the focus on Anthony Richardson, whereas it should be on Jonathan Taylor. And when the focus is on Jonathan Taylor, he's really productive. Now, I know you mentioned he had the 24 carries, but, you know, he's a guy that is accustomed to really bouncing back. And when this offense wants to prioritize getting him involved and having success, he usually does. So I still think he's an RB2. I remember when we made a Tua Tagovailoa problem and a Jalen Waddle problem. You know what fixed that? Playing against the Patriots. <laughs> I think I think facing the Patriots is going to fix Jonathan Taylor as well. I'm starting in this week. Yeah, and then they get their bye week. Then they close the season with Denver. Not easy. Tennessee, not easy. You do get to the fantasy championship, though, in week 17. It's the Giants. So hopefully Jonathan Taylor can lead you to that point and then maybe gives you a big finish and kick. Maybe he needs a little bit of rest, though, with the bye as well. Offensive line needs to get healthy also. All right, Robert, I want to ask you about the Steelers running back situation because for the most part, it's been a solid season for Najee Harris. But a lot of that came when Jalen Warren was banged up. Now Warren's back. Warren had the better game than Harris in week 12 against the Cleveland Browns. How do we feel about these two guys moving forward against the Bengals in week 13 and then rest of season? Is Warren going to surpass Najee Harris and outperform him like he did in 2023? No, I don't think so. I don't think Jalen Warren will surpass Najee Harris because I think Najee Harris is still going to get the bulk of the opportunities. But Jalen Warren is one of those players that can just have uh, an explosive player or an explosive moment at any point of a game. It reminds me a lot of Austin Eckler, you know, for the commanders. But I think that Najee Harris is still the RB2, RB3 sort of must start player. So I, I think you see here the consensus 29 and 31, sports line 27 and 31. When when we don't have anybody on a buy, that's pretty much how I view both these guys. They are high end flexes. If they score a touchdown, they're going to get creep into that RB two range. If they don't, then they're going to be around RB thirty. 
if I don't really want to start them, especially in a week like this where I shouldn't have to. The thing that I like about Jalen Warren is two of his last three games, 12 plus carries. If he's starting to get as many carries as Najee Harris, he's going to be better than Najee Harris. I agree with what Robert said. They still should feed Najee Harris more, give him more carries. He was having a solid season prior to the last couple of weeks, and he did get a little bit banged up in that Browns game. But we know the receptions to start to favor Jalen Warren moving forward if Russell Wilson throws to his running backs. I like that Harris has had a couple of catches as well. But if we see the carries get equal, I do think Jalen Warren's a better talent. So we'll see if he starts to emerge as the better fantasy option moving forward. Not an easy matchup like you would think against the Bengals. Their run defense has been much better in their last couple of games. All right, last topic here before we take one of your questions. I like to ask a little look ahead. We're going to start to do a list a little bit more as the season rolls to an end. Looking ahead to 2025. So we have three prominent rookie running backs. Before the season, it would have been easy. Jonathan Brooks would have been the guy we're saying is the best rookie running back going into his sophomore season. But these three guys rank them for 2025. Bucky Irving. Tyrone Tracy and Jonathan Brooks. Robert, you go first. Uh, Bucky Irving is the clear number one here, in my opinion. I'd go Jonathan Brooks at two, Tyrone Tracy coming in last at three. I think because of the Chuba Hubbard contract, I'd probably have to put Bucky Irving at one. I will put Jonathan Brooks at two. Tracy's the type of guy, and really, I guess Irving is too, but Tracy's the type of guy that, if, especially if there's a coaching change, might just be replaced next year. So he's a distant number three for me. Well, that's an interesting point. You know, I, I do think Irving is the clear-cut number one because Rashad White, as we know, has struggled uh, each of the last two years to run the ball. He's done a great job catching passes, but I do think, as we're seeing Bucky Irving to get more work moving forward, certainly love his op opportunity this week as they take on the Carolina Panthers. Rashad White's a great flex. The next two, though, is tough because if Tracy's the featured running back for the Giants, then it's hard not to say he's two, even with a coaching change. If the, so far, they said they're not going to make a coach change because the quarterback play should be better. Offensive line, as we saw at the beginning of the season, was healthy for the Giants. They perform well. Brooks in a secondary role, it's hard to say he's going to be better than Chuba Hubbard. The talent is there. And maybe two years removed from the ACL proves it. But, man, it's just disappointing to say that he's not number one on this list based on where he was drafted and the opportunity that we thought he had. I hate the Chuba Hubbard contract for Jonathan Brooks. We'll see what happens this offseason as we rank these guys once again. All right, let's answer one of your questions before we take a break here. Thank you again for sending them to us on social media using the hashtag AskFFT. And we got this one here. Najee Harris, Jalen Warren, Nick Chubb, or Gus Edwards without J.K. Dobbins. Which two do you start here, Robert? Oh, boy, this is tough. Um, wow. I'll probably go Najee Harris and Nick Chubb. That's what I would do. Yikes. I would, Full PPR, <laughs> I would probably go the Steelers. I'd probably just start both Steelers, go Najee and Warren. I would go both Steelers as well. In non-PBR, maybe Chubb over Warren just with the opportunity that he scores. Did score two touchdowns last week, but it's not an easy matchup for him taking on the Denver Broncos. We'll see how this all unfolds. I do hope that Gus Edwards has a strong game that maybe we could rely on him while J.K. Dobbins is 